and welcome to another Olfi 1.5 tutorial. In this video, we're actually in the car uh, and we're gonna demonstrate gyro stabilization. Now the video you're seeing now is in no way gyro stabilized. So we're getting the widest field of view possible. This is great in situations like this. We're attached to the object that's moving right now. So every time the vehicle that I'm in shakes, bounces around or, or whatever that might be, it reacts to me. So I'm, at, I'm connected to this, the camera's connected to this, so everything shakes together. That way you can't really tell how bumpy this is apart from you know slight vibrations here and there. Now, that all changes when we turn the gyro stabilization on. So, if for example this camera was pointing out of the front window now, you'd probably see the bumps and the movement and how bumpy the road is that we're driving on more than you can now. In those situations, if you want super smooth shots, gyro stabilization would probably be ideal. So let's demo that. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna pull over in a second and I'm gonna keep this shot but switch it into gyro stabilization. So there's gonna be no difference other than the gyro stabilization being turned on. Now we're about to go through a wiggly part, which I'll do backwards in a second with the gyro on. So turning left and then immediately right. And up a bumpy bit of a hill. Okay, so let's find somewhere to pull over and we'll change the settings up to gyro. Okay, so now we're back with the gyro stabilization turned on. What you should see now is a slightly cropped image. So we've cropped the sensor a small bit. Now that's the disadvantage to using gyro, but it does give you those super smooth shots. So what we're doing, we're giving ourselves room on the sensor to move around. Now what you'll probably notice now is that objects like my steering wheel and my turbo gauge, they're gonna start to look like they're moving because the camera's trying to stabilize at the horizon, which is obviously outside and behind me. And it almost looks like the camera's floating. Now this is where it doesn't really work for me. Uh, some people may like this shot, but because we're connected, and I'm sitting in a seat that's connected to the car that is ultimately connected to the camera, the stabilization is not really required. So as we drive around, you're probably going to notice strange movements from side to side. Uh, it's going to be most present when taking corners. So let me see if I can find a, a sort of a, a right or a left here that we can just take. As the, this road's pretty straight but bumpy. It's probably going to look a bit strange, the up and down movements here. Um, but let's see if we can take a junction here. And you'll have probably noticed a weird kind of warping and movement, well not warping, but movement in the car. If you like that, great, use gyro in these instances. But for most people, it probably adds motion rather than reduces it and that's where gyro isn't gonna work great. So what we'll do now is we're gonna jump out, change the camera angle to looking out the front of the vehicle, and we'll do a example of how gyro works in those situations. Okay, so this time we've got gyro turned on, and we're looking out through mm, quite a dirty windscreen, but this is gonna show that now that we've got a horizon in front of us that our motion is reduced due to the gyro stabilization. And this is really where the gyro comes into its own and works really well. The next thing we're gonna do is turn 
the gyro stabilization off. And what you'll see here is a much wider shot now. So you probably see parts of the dash in. Um, but now we're gonna get all the bumps and jumps with the road that aren't necessarily smoothed out. My favorite way of using the gyro wouldn't necessarily be in a car, but we've kind of just gotta use what we can access right now for our example. But really, with the gyro, I'd be looking to use it in situations like mountain biking on a chest harness or head strap. So the last thing that we need to have a look at is how to actually turn the gyro stabilization on. Obviously we couldn't show you this when we were in the car because we were recording using that camera. So when you've powered your camera on, remember it'll go into your last used mode, in my case video. If you're not in video, you'll need to select that. What we then do is press the down arrow to enter the shortcut menu, scroll through to gyro sensor, press the shutter button, choose gyro sensor on, and hit the mode button to go back. Now, in the top right hand corner of the camera screen, there'll be a small hand. This hand will flash when the camera is doing the gyro stabilization, so when it's physically stabilizing the image. And that really is all there is to it. You can use this in a variety of the different modes on the camera, even in photo mode. So go ahead and experiment. If you've got any questions, please feel free to ask. But that's all there is to it in this video. Check back soon for more.